tuning in to the online broadcast network, AfterBuzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads from over 200 countries and your number one source in after-show entertainment. Oh, AfterBuzz TV. The destination for TV superfans. Producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows. Interviewing celebrities and showrunners. And bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E! Entertainment's Maria Menounos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! I'll tell you when to start. Oops. Okay. Hello and welcome to UFC After Buzz TV. Today we will be talking about Fight Night 52 in Satama, Japan. Uh, Mark Hunt versus Roy Nelson. My name is Dari Baronado and I'm here with my only co-host today, Mr. George Hermosa. I'm, I'm looking for Jay. I'm looking for Jay. Well, I don't think he's that hard to miss. Oh, that's right. He's in, where is he? I don't even know. Oh I didn't God. ask. He's in his hometown, which I believe is somewhere in the Midwest, but I do not know. Jay Tan, hi, Jay. who normally joins us, cannot make it today, but we want to say hi, Jay. Hi, Jay. He'll be spiritually here with us as we do our fight coverage. Did you introduce me? I did. I said George Armosa. What, you don't know your own name? I, don't, I just didn't hear you. I was busy, too busy looking for Jay. Oh, that's right. Hi, Daria. Hi. You're looking good Thanks. with those two black eyes. Do you or do you not have two black eyes? I do. What happened? I got punched. By? Twice. By, by the same person? A fist. Um, I don't know that it was the same person. Uh, Wait, how do you not know if it's the same person? Because we, when we spar on Fridays, we spar with... Is every, it like a free-for-all? Yeah, we spar with everyone on our team. And this was my week to do, like, my, probably my second hardest set of rounds. So next week will be my hardest set. Because usually when you come, you know, when you do have shorts on, not that I'm checking you out, mm -hmm. but I'm checking you out. You have all these like <laughs> bruises on your legs. Yeah. Today, your legs look fine. But... Actually, yeah, they do. I have a little right here. No, but that's nothing like you ha I used to have because you used to have them like on your thighs. Yeah. Now they're on your face. Yep. Uh, I don't know what that means. But you still have all your teeth. I do. Still have... My mom's right a, a, a dental hygienist. She would probably kill me if I lost any of my teeth. Really? Yeah. She's actually coming out to see me next week and she's bringing me. Uh, a mouth guard because she can make them. Can you tell her to bring me a toothbrush? Sure. Uh, I'm a little scared that you won't have one till then. So until then, you can borrow one of mine. I hear somebody laughing in the background. Well, it is quite funny that uh, you know your hygiene, but um, but your teeth look good. You don't smell too bad from here. From there, mm -hmm. hold on. Please don't. Uh, see, this is a community water. He decided we should share it. I keep pushing it to his side. I don't want to share it with him, especially after that comment. <clears throat> Anywho. Were you in Japan for the fights? Yeah, I, was, I just came back. I, I so. just flew in. My arms are killing me. <laughs> this is a good one. Uh, <laughs> we weren't there. One day we will be there. We're going to bring AfterBuzz to Japan. Uh, but it was the first time that women's MMA in the UFC was in Japan. It was the first ever UFC sanctioned women's fight in Japan. Yep. Wow. Wow. But Rin Nakai, the girl who faced Have off. Have you seen any of your videos? Rin Nakai, she had some crazy videos online. Girl, she has more than, they aren't even interview videos. She just has videos of her. I think there was one of her dusting, like a cabinet. <laughs> that was my cabinet. That oh, was your cabinet? I did notice that. Oh, wait. Yeah. Um, we'll get to that later, though. Yeah, that's, that, that's, that's for later. No, Rin Nakai, yeah, she definitely put some weird videos out on YouTube. I wouldn't even call them like, it didn't even come across as like a, a marketing stunt because I didn't get what she was trying to market. It wasn't even like it was sexual. It was more just like weird. I mean, she definitely got attention. And yeah. And that's definitely yeah. something good to do. We were talking about before we the show. We were talking about this. How market marketability is really important when you're a fighter. So important. Um, we've talked to so many fighters, both veteran and current in the UFC, uh, you know, over the past year of doing this show or whatever. And they take such different paths. It's funny. Like we, you see guys like Rich Franklin who, you know, was pretty successful in the UFC. And after his career, he is even more successful. Maybe he started a juicing company and opened a juice store in Beverly Hills. And he, now he's co-owner of uh, what organization? I wasn't on that show. I'm sorry. I wasn't here. I wasn't. Oh, you weren't here that, yet? This was oh, okay. I thought you were being a smart ass. No, 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 no. You're right. You weren't here yet. Uh, Rich Franklin's co-owner of another MMA uh, organization now, but I don't know which one, so I'm not going to say it. Um, it's 
it's like in a different country okay um yeah but like you know people make things out of their mma career and stick in and around the sport i always like that when they use whatever they were in and they take kind of right they're not just fighters but they take whatever they're in like some positive elements they kind of look around it mm -hmm. just shows that they're not just a fighter but it's like wow i think now i kind of see how the promoting aspect goes now yeah. i kind of see how the marketing aspect goes and they kind of use that yeah. for their post mma career or whatever yeah. they do you know so i think and that's always been pretty cool i think that is pretty cool and it's more so than just being like okay i'm an mma fighter now i'm going to be an mma i'm going to own an mma gym and be a coach it's more than just that i mean these guys are really taking on a brand in its own like um it's pretty smart it is really smart mm -hmm. it's like you have a select amount of time being a fighter guys you all know this um you either have sustained too many injuries that you have to you know forfeit the sport and retire or you just get old and you know you're past your prime and there's no point of taking unneeded injury and unneeded risk at such an age you know when you're done and when you get to that point unfortunately mma is not the type of sport that's, that's in any sort of union yet and you don't have you know a pension or a retirement plan unless you make one for yourself so I think it's really important for people in this sport to a market themselves when they're first starting out, you know, come up with a game plan, come up with some way to have, you know, dual success in your career, whether it's being uh, like Chelsea Sonnen or Kenny Florian, they they're on Fox Sports one or Chelsea Sonnen was Kenny Florian's on Fox Sports one and he has he does a show and, you know, he also trains with some of the top guys still just to keep in shape i think really he's a commentator for the ufc a commentator for the ufc no no it was uh mike goldberg and brian stan yesterday brian yeah yeah it wasn't ken flow hmm. um do you know why i think they just switch it up every now and then do they? maybe yeah. scheduling i mean I, I i i figure their top two guys are goldberg and rogan right so i'm, I'm sure they do all the pay-per-views um i'm sure i think they do all the fox cards mm -hmm. but it's maybe just one of those things where Maybe their scheduling is just too much. Right. So I'm just kind of curious, not to not to cause drama, but is it like, would they rather have Brian Stan or Ken Flo? Like, how do they determine that? Oh, yeah, we got I a card in Japan. Uh, uh, who do we ask first without, uh, you know, the other person not getting mad? Yeah. Like, do they flip a coin? I don't know if it's that personal. Mm -hmm. I think it, I think it might be like because they're both really good at what they do. Really, really Absolutely. good. Absolutely. I think it might be like Kenny. Where are you this weekend? You know, what's going on? Or but but then Brian will be like, how come you didn't ask me first? Uh, well, who who was there first? Kenny Florian Kenny, was it? Kenny, yeah. Because even when he was fighting, I think that he occasionally filled in for Joe Rogan. Right. Even so when he was a... I agree. Uh, yeah. So I think Kenny, uh, maybe it's more of like a seniority thing. Yeah, that's true. That's that, my, that's your one sip. That's our water. The, the next sip is mine. Okay. Okay. Make sure you drink it from here. So it's like we're making out. Okay. Um. So do you want to go over the, the, the fights? <laughs> do I? Okay, yeah. I do. This was an, a super exciting... Uh, fight night probably one of the most exciting in a couple of weeks now um it was just a really exciting night even the I ones so. that went to decision were super competitive it's funny i think i mentioned it last week where uh -huh. i think for a fight pass card it was i thought it was a pretty sad card yeah even before knowing how good the fights were thankfully they were right um you're not really know like we we've had conversations in the past in regards to these fight pass cards mm -hmm. not really being a top quality card maybe you'll have the main event and then the undercard being a little eh, who's who wishy-washy yeah. yeah like not really exciting not really ranked guys but for the most part this fight pass card was because i think it had to do with japan i'm actually surprised it wasn't on tv or maybe even a pay-per-view yeah like the previous japanese cards that's um, true so it's pretty cool that it was on fight pass mm -hmm. it was at midnight were you watching at midnight it, no uh, no i was not i'm not gonna lie i started watching Did at you? midnight but i fell asleep around 1 30 or 2 woke up and then finished watching the fights okay so uh, you didn't make it either no no it played it played it like like he said like midnight our time so that's when, yeah that's went when it was through live. the morning so we didn't watch it live but we have fight pass for 9.99 ufc.com guys it's that simple how um, much do you pay a month i know you don't pay anything <laughs> 9.99 i think i think you know someone i i don't know anybody i don't know what mm -hmm. he's talking about guys mm -hmm. uh, i feel so short today today Hmm. Anyway, uh, yeah. So the fight card started off with. Uh, please don't mind me with my pronunciations. These are a lot of them are Japanese names, and I'm just not Japanese. Uh, Kyogi Horiguchi defeated John Dallas Reyes via TKO in round one. 
that fight was exciting. Oh my god! Right? That, I mean, I I had heard somewhere someone said. I think somebody tweeted somewhere, and I was like, right. expect this fight to be fight of the night. Really? Yeah, and I was like, I don't know who these guys are, but okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna watch Kyogi uh, Horiguchi. Kyogi, pro- yeah. yeah. Prior to this fight, was ranked number fourteen. I think he was supposed to face Chris Carriasso initially. Probably but something happened, but now obviously Chris Carriasso is fighting fighting Dimitri Johnson DJ next, next week. Vegas. Yeah, like this guy is no joke. It is, I think it was his third fight in the UFC last night, or two nights ago, whenever it was. Yeah, last night. Um, third fight in the UFC, and he's ranked number fourteen. Now he's probably ranked. I don't know if they moved him up a spot. I don't know if he's number thirteen now. Maybe you could check. I think I think they're going to release the rankings tomorrow, which I will be oh, checking okay. for very soon. Um, but I mean the dude came into the UFC and automatically got in the top 15. That's huge, especially in that weight class where it's so competitive and, you know, there's a lot of really quick, good, talented guys. Uh, so, John De Los Reyes, mm-hmm. it's only his second fight in the UFC. Yeah. He looked pretty good, too. And he looks good, it, too. It, looked, it was going back and forth for a little bit. Right. Um, yeah. I thought I, For a second, I did think that De Los Reyes did have that fight. Um, really? But, yeah, for, for like a second. I, I thought I was going back and forth. I think he had... He did get where it was able to get mount on him for a second. Yeah, yeah. But and, he um, had, uh, Kyogi had the, a ridiculous body kick right there in the beginning that stunned De Los Reyes. I was like, oh my God, is, are they going to call it? Like, you got to be really, there's a really fine line there where you're holding your stomach in the ref's eyes. I mean, he could have stopped that and he couldn't have argued it. Because, I was thinking that. I was like, yeah. just with those body shots. I've never had, have you had one before? <laughs> you know what because i heard your body just shuts down i um, i don't know if i could speak to this extent but i've been hit very hard not only in in the kidney or the liver but just the solar plex Mm -hmm. and it happened to me two weeks ago in sparring uh and this she's a taekwondo girl super great kicks like her kicks are the kind of kicks that come from nowhere like you don't even see them coming and she jabbed me right in the solar plex and i went (gasps) It just instantly knocked the wind out of me and it felt like all of my oxygen was just sucked out of me and I healed over and I mean, it, had my adrenaline been pumping faster and had it been a real fight, I probably never would have bent over. Like how long did it take for you to recover from that Like shot? a minute. Okay. Yeah. I, but well, if it wasn't a fight, ex- let's say your adrenaline was going and you would have yeah. got hit with the action, you would have been done I, for the fight. I think if my adrenaline was going in, it was a fight. I wouldn't have been so dramatic with the uh-huh. reaction. Like, I think uh, I knew. Because like you could be dramatic with I it. I think I knew I'm safe. I'm in my gym. Yeah. My coach is going to give me a 30-second break to, to regroup myself and stuff. And But I finished the round. I did. I, I stopped for maybe 30 seconds to a minute. It was still hurting. I still couldn't breathe. But I was like, you know what? This might happen in a fight. I need to, you know, work with getting through it. Mm-hmm. So I did I did continue. Although it Good for you. sucks so bad. Good for you. So I'm when he got hit you. with that. Oh, thank you. Thank you. When you got hit with that, oh, a little, okay. Mm-hmm. I gave it back. Mm-hmm. Um, when he got hit with that, I was like, I felt for him, but at the same time, I was like, don't grab your stomach. <laughs> what are you doing? Like, like any a target. Mi- a- yeah, any minute. Not yet. Yeah, that's another good point. He said to his opponent, hey, you just really hurt my stomach. You want to hit it again? <laughs> I mean, it, it's just not a good idea. A, lo- a lot of teams, um, my team doesn't do this specifically, but a lot of teams practice what's called. Um, uh, what's, I don't even know what they call it, but like strong facial expressions, like literally like getting being in the worst pain MMA can cause you and staying strong and not making, you know, weak sounds like, oh, or, <laughs> or, oh, you know, and yeah. showing weakness because in this day's MMA's judging system, you never know what could happen. You exactly. never know what they count as a weakness. I mean, we've seen people lose that we think is controversial and we wonder why. And the judges look at things like, Oh well, after the round, she was laying on the mat, face down. She looked like she was gonna puke. Exactly. Or... Even like if you like were to get me into some arm bar, which you never could. <laughs> but if you never get me in an arm bar and I say, "Ow, ow, that hurts," that's considered a verbal submission. Are you good? Jay just texted me. What did he text you? <laughs> Jay Tan, that's very funny. Oh my god, it's a group text. Don't you don't have your phone on you? No, because I'm professional and I like to. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Computer in front of you. Well, I have notes on this. Phone. Checking my fantasy football team. That's um, funny. Anyways, go. I'll, I'll read it later. Jay yeah, Tan, you'll, shout out you'll to laugh Jay later Tan. at home. Okay. Yeah, and then you'll text Jay back and say <laughs> "f you." Um, yeah, but no, that was a really good fight. Um, it was a overhand right that completely rocked him. He went to the ground immediately. I think uh, John Delos Reyes went to the ground as like a, oh, okay, I'll be safe here, mm-hmm. and 
he just got on top of him and ground and pound finished it so quick he had so much stamina left it was really really good exciting first round tko good fight uh and Let's then there was kog goes from here I, where do you think he goes from here? Because he, like I said, he's already number 14. Uh, I mean, just consider looking at the rankings right now. I mean, yeah, you got maybe someone like Brad Pickett. Maybe see maybe see about maybe fighting Chris Carriasso if he can't get through DJ next week. Yeah. Um, yeah, should be fun. Should be exciting. Yeah, I would even put... I mean, where is um, John Moraga? Uh, I think he's... No, not in rankings. What's like? What's he have lined up? Does he have anything? He just fought, so I'm sure he probably a needs little a fight. while. That'd be, that'd be a good fight. Maybe like the same time. Maybe him, John Ronga. I think he fought I would like, like two, to three see weeks that. ago. Yeah. Okay, it okay. could be good. Yeah. And then we have Kichi Kunimoto defeating via decision Richard Walsh. This was a little controversial. I know you probably thought a so too. A little controversial. I mean, I wouldn't go as far and say, "Oh my god, that that is oh travesty." My god. I've seen a lot worse decisions than that. I mean, I would definitely do give yeah. that third round to to kunimoto yeah yeah i mean let's see what you i, I haven't read your notes yet i haven't read yeah, your notes yet read my notes that I made well you. apparently walsh knocked kunimoto down in the first 20 seconds with a beautiful i like the way you described the left hook Thank beautiful you. left hook. I, that's what my mind said as soon as soon as i saw it i was like oh my god it's a beautiful left hook yeah you can't have them tell it if you're going to be a fighter when a guy you gotta say like vicious left hook or brutal left hook Honey, not beautiful left i'm hook. gonna hit you with a beautiful left hook i'm gonna look good doing it and you're not well you look good already Oh, thanks. So then I switch it up. Wait till you see me with my cornrow. October um, 11, right? October 11th, Maverick Stadium in Aldento, California. I still don't know where that is. Neither do I. It's okay. We have GPSs for that reason. Yeah. Um, then no. apparently Walsh dropped Kunimoto again with a knee. And yeah. he broke his nose. Broke his nose. His nose was broken in the first round. Gushing blood you all over. You broken your nose? No. No. Some people think because I have a big Italian nose that it's been broken. Guys, this is all real, all natural. It hasn't been broken yet. People thought that since I had two black eyes this weekend, that it was from getting hit in the Who? nose. Oh, People. black eyes. Okay. That's it. Never what else did you again. put? Let's see what else you put. You Never put that Kunimoto round two, so pushing forward, even with his broken... Kudos to Kunimoto, pushing forward with his broken nose. And I was just talking about this with Marcus on, on the podcast I did before Marcus this. Kowal. Kowal. Yeah, who does MMA Nick. That guy's funny, dude. He's really cool. Yeah. He still good. hasn't hit me up about one of his comedy shows. Oh my God, there was one, I was supposed to go to one this weekend. Him and my head coach, Ian Harris, were performing Where? at Universal City John Hall. John Lovitz? Yep, John Lovitz. Not going to be to tell me about it. And everyone from my team went. I was supposed to go last minute. Something came up. I couldn't go. Next time, I will invite you. Okay. Um, but yeah, so a beautiful knee that dropped him as well. He was dropped four times in the first round. I think I counted four. I mean, any of those four, had he reacted maybe not uh you know gathered his self better could have been called once yeah. again it could have been called a tko so that was that was super crazy but kunimoto once again people come back and a lot of the time the judges give more credit for people that start off on the bottom and make that comeback I agree. and he did do it do you so, think the fact that they were in japan had anything to do with it of course i think so yeah there's politics I, uh, i'd love to think there's not politics in mma but there is no i mean it helps but i wouldn't say it's like the deciding that's factor. the only reason why he won i mean i just I, don't think he won that fight i mean okay you can you obviously gave walsh we all agree he mm -hmm. won that first round right can we agree that that third round was mm, can we agree that i mean just because the commentator said so doesn't mean it actually happened i agree with the commentator I mean, but as in, we agree with them, but that doesn't mean that the judges did. Oh, right. Well, of course, they, clearly they didn't. Can we agree that Kunimoto had the third round? Yes. So just that second round was a little controversial. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I agree. And it, the second round was a lot of, if I remember correctly, it was a lot of clinching and cage work and holding and wrestling. And it was like, okay, if that's going to beat the fact that he rocked you four times in the first round and mm. broke your freaking nose and... Mm. But then again, it's like, oh, this guy has a lot of heart for coming back. And, you know, they both did awesome. I can't, there's no loser in that fight, to be honest. Um, unfortunately, there had to be a literal loser. But yeah. uh, the, the good thing I like about, especially Dana White, is that he won't penalize you for those kind of things where to the point where if you did, if you had a good showing. Right. Like he's not going to drop you, you know, he's right. not just going to go, oh, you lost. You're going to get fired. That's it's the thing people don't realize about the UFC. And that I think we've seen being fans of it for so long is that. If you perform and you put on a show, you're not going anywhere. Oh. You really aren't. 
I mean, you could you could lose. And this is just my personal opinion. I think you can have three, four, five, five loses in a row. If they're like crazy competitive matches and you put on some crazy show and, you know, really market yourself to be that kind of fighter that's good in a win or a loss, you're not getting cut from the UFC. That's true. So I think go out there and perform. Yeah. Win or lose. Write that down. Make sure you write that down. Go out, go out and perform. It all starts October 11th. October 11th. It all starts I, um, for you then. Guess who I met today? Today? Yeah. Give me a hint. Uh, he's an MMA fighter. Uh, he... Cor Corey Feldman. No. You don't know who Corey Feldman is? I think I do. Who is he? I don't know. The Goonies? Oh, yeah. Okay. No, no you don't know who he is. Um, anyway, it sounds familiar. Uh, he's an MMA fighter, ex-UFC fighter. Uh, he's now a referee. Frank Trigg. Close. He uh, referees alongside of Frank Trigg. Uh, 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 he was actually a... Um, Frank Trigg was like his mentor, I think. Really? Yeah. I think they were like buddies for a little while. Bruce Buffer. No, we met him before. Mm -hmm. That was my first show. Not Bruce Buffer. I remember. It was in... Yeah, it was in the studio. It was in the studio. I was sitting right there. Mm -hmm. Bruce Buffer sitting... No, I was sitting right here. Bruce Buffer sitting right there. Mm -hmm. And who'd you meet? Mac Danzig. Oh, former, uh, not former, but he was an Ultimate Fighter winner. Yeah, he won season six of the Ultimate Fighter. He he was like a comeback for a replacement, something like that, and he won. Um, super good fighter, exciting guy to watch. Um, a lot of heart. He came on the podcast that I did on MMA Net before this, and he is just the most intelligent, well-spoken person I, I i mean he just really portrays himself very well and looking not 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 to judge him but you know looking at him you, you wouldn't think he'd be this businessman or this philosophical man but he's really intriguing he's one of those dudes where like because i've seen him i think he was at the rf no what, what was that show on in woodland hills that we went to, like, we went to uh, i don't know what they call that california fight alliance or something like that was he i think he was there was he refing there or was he refing U of MMA? Yeah, you, he's definitely refing U of MMA. You saw him there. Yeah, but it, he just looked like a normal dude. And it was like, he is. dude, this guy is an awesome fighter. He won the Ultimate Fighter. Yeah. Season six, apparently. Yep. So, yeah. He is an awesome dude. And he, we were just talking, um, and we just let him rant for like 20 minutes. And it was just like not a dull moment. He was just really uh, insightful about, you know, what it takes to be a fighter. And the fact that he has a daughter and he had so much brain damage and so many concussions that he chose to give it up for his daughter. I mean, he said, had he not, you know, had he not had a kid, he probably would have kept going because mm -hmm. what's he have to lose, you know, yeah, exactly. but he had this, he had this beautiful girl and she's, I think she's six years old now. And he's like, I just can't let her grow up without mm -hmm. a dad and, yeah. or a dad that's potentially brain damaged. I can't let that happen. So he chose to retire. Um, we we're talking about the itch that we hear from a lot of veterans that they get. He's like, I already have the itch. I already want to mm -hmm. get back in there. Uh, he's like, I've considered it, but I think I just need to hang out. At least he knows. Cause a lot of people, it's like they know they retire and then they get that itch and then just go out and do it. That, that's like a how good many point. guys have we seen retire and then come back? Well, guess who his best friend is that he m spoke about Gray. Not, Gray Maynard. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Really? They train together. Yeah. And he, um, cause he's another guy that, especially after his last fight, you're like, Ugh, should that guy keep fighting? So we put him on the spot. We said, Mac. Call him up. What do you think? No, right. no, we said... That'd be cool. That would be cool. We should have got Greg on the phone. We said, well, uh, what do you think? Is he done? Should he, you know, hang it up? Or, you know, do you know something that we don't know in, sp in sparring? Is he still there? You know, whatever. He's like, as his friend, he should be done. And I was like, wow. that You know, why? You know, what are your reasons? Is it because he, he's lost his speed and agility or is it just because he's lost his chin and you just think he's done as a fighter or what is it and he's like you know what he has a kid just like i do i'm his friend i care about him and i think it, you know i think his chin's going and i think now's his time mm. it's sad so yeah that's a guy who literally was probably one or two punches away from being the champion yeah if you remember i mean i think back it was like january 1st 2000 10 or 10 on 11 12. Okay. him and frank yeager fought a five round draw mm -hmm. so you got to think one of those fights was 10 8 you know f you know for whatever reason and then right. you got to think if one of those if that round went 10 9 it wouldn't have been a draw 
Ray Mary would have been the champion. So just that one thing, you never know. That's why every little bit counts yep. when you're a fighter. It does. You can't just, you know, oh, well, I'm going to drop my hands for a minute and then get, no, every little thing counts. Yep. I'm not even a fighter and I know that. No, you're absolutely right. I've seen, um, I watched a female fight. It was on a prelim of a UFC card. It was like, I, I want to say two or three months ago. And I remember telling you and Jay about it because I was so furious. It was these two girls and um, the one girl, oh, Dufont, I want to say her last name is Dufont, do something like something with the D. And she was, she was such a big prospect. She was making her UFC debut. She was supposed to be so good. And I'm watching this fight and she's doing great and everything. But at the end of every round, she's laying on the mat like this, going. <gasps> <laughs> and it wasn't, and Jay mentioned, oh, maybe she was having an anxiety attack. I know when, I can tell when someone's breathing heavier, they're having an anxiety attack. She was just panting. And her corner was like, get up. And she was just like, I'm so tired. Like, she just was late just laying there. And she did that at the end of every single mm -hmm. round. And those rounds, George, were decisive. She won that fight. I remember. I forgot. I forgot who it was, but I do remember you being lost, very upset about that. She lost to unanimous decision, guys. Oh. That is a perfect example of why: a) you never show your weaknesses in a fight; b) after every round, I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're GSP or if you're debuting amateur, whatever it is. You pop up on your feet, you raise your hands, and you run around the cage like you just took <laughs> whatever. You know what I mean? It's just like those little things count so much, and I hate seeing fighters lose because of that. I agree. It's a shame. Yeah. I mean, speaking of women's MMA, next up is the first ever women's fight in MMA and UFC yes. in Japan. Yes. In What's her Japan. Name? What's her name? Maisha. Oh, my God. Cupcake Tate versus. Misha. What are you doing? What are you shaking your head for? I'm, I'm going to apologize to Misha after you're done. Go ahead. Versus Rin Nakai. Misha. I'm sorry, honey. I'm so sorry that my co host pronounces your name Maisha. What'd you think of that fight? I know I know you were probably looking forward to that fight, probably above all the other fights, but what'd you think? Uh, well, apparently, no, you, you put in the notes think. huge gap in talent, apparently. So yeah. I'm sure you probably thought that Maisha. I'm still stuck was on how you say her name. I'm sure you thought that Tate or Cup, let's just call her Cupcake. I'm sure you thought that Cupcake is just going to wipe the floor with her. Okay, this is my thing. Okay, so the Rin Nakai, we've seen this before. We've seen people that have huge reputations in other organizations get their UFC debut against someone who's pretty high up in the ranks just mm -hmm. because they had such good records in other organizations. She was undefeated, to be honest undefeated. with you. So it's not just that. It's not just 1-0, 2-0. and oh, She was 15-0. and oh, 15 And, and oh. won no contest, I think. But, like, 15-0. Yeah. and oh. So uh, you, you would think, okay, put her up against someone maybe higher in the rankings. Mm -hmm. Putting her up against Misha Tate. Are you kidding me, guys? I didn't like that. Really? No, nope, didn't like it. Um, I mean, she was able to get her back a, a few times. Okay. The way that Misha felt, the look on Misha's face when she had her back was the look on my face when I take jujitsu classes with the kids and the, and, the little, and, the little, and the little boy or the squirmy little girl gets on my back and I'm just kind of waiting there for him to fall off. They get your back, but it, she wasn't threatened. I, she didn't even kind of have the rear mm, naked. She I was noticed just, that too. She, well, let me ask you this. So obviously, I think there was a six inch difference uh, in reach. Misha Tate was five seven. Oh, in height as well, yeah. And Renick and what? Height and reach. Okay, yeah. And then Renick High was five one. Now, don't get it twisted. This is the one thirty five division. So Misha Tate being five seven one thirty five. <sighs> I That's have a lot one thing. to say. I have a but, lot to say. But Renick Kai is this five one. She's literally five one. 135 pounds so you know she probably had to cut weight and but let me tell you something if you don't know who she is google her because she is stocky i mean she if you saw her she would be a completely different person if she had ever and, and not only that if she were to ever cut weight they don't have a 125 division so she would have to cut weight to 115 which is probably more natural for her height they exactly but considering how buff she is how cut yeah that's probably the best weight class for her so they they asked her training camp and her training camp said, nope. no way can Rin Nakai make 115. And I agree by looking at mm -hmm. that body stature. I, I want to speak on something that you said that I am very adamant about. And it is height and reach advantage. Being, okay. So I, I, I train, I'm lucky enough to have so many girls at my gym to train with. How tall are you? 5'7". Okay. 
Okay, so I'm considered tall, mm -hmm. especially if I fight pro at 115. I'll be one of the taller girls. I mean, you got girls like Tisha Torres, who is going to have extreme muscle mass on me, mm -hmm. but she's like 5'1". Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you give and you take with each, with each advantage, but there's nothing harder if you haven't mastered it yet. If you're at a level like, like maybe Misha Tate or something like that, and you've gone against girls with, you know, distinctively better or longer reach than you and you've practiced that and you've really mastered it that's one thing but i can tell you at my level i haven't experienced that except with my training partners and there's this one girl and she's six foot and she has arms longer than my legs okay and every time i spar with her it is like i'm a bobblehead <laughs> that just keeps walking into her jab like it's really hard and i've 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 worked ways around it and i've gotten better at it as the months have gone on but I remember the first time sparring with her, it was like, oh my gosh, this is overwhelming. It's just, it's not that they're better than you. It's not that they're stronger or faster than you. It's that they're built differently than you. And that changes the fight a little bit. So, so let me ask you this real quick. Yeah, go so, ahead. So you have, um, <laughs> so you are fighting somebody who's shorter than you. What are some, are there any disadvantages from somebody fighting somebody? Successful? Definitely. Um, if they're a good wrestler or okay. if they're, you know, they, they can shoot in on, in on you. And if I keep my hands maybe higher, like in a boxing stance, not like a Muay Thai stance, mm -hmm. I have like 90 inches of body for them to shoot in on. So I, I would say the big, biggest disadvantage would be takedowns if they're good mm -hmm. at them. Um, also, they say that the shorter you are, the better you are in the clinch game because usually you're stronger. And uh, so if you get like a Muay Thai clinch, not a wrestler's cr clinch, you can, you know, kind of control that. Uh, I would say those are the two disadvantages. Um, I don't really know that there's much else because mm -hmm. as far as the stand-up game goes, the person with the reach definitely has the advantage. I mean, unless, unless they're really good at dirty boxing and really can get inside of those long punches mm -hmm. and, and scruff you up, which, I mean, guys as high as like top 15 in the UFC, that's no problem. They, you know, if they were always short in their weight division, they always had a smaller reach. They've been fighting guys with longer reaches their whole lives. You know what I mean? You, there's a certain amount of getting used to it and adjusting to it that just comes natural. You know, you just you just work with it. Um, but like I said, Rinda Kai was not ready for Misha I would, Tate. I would like to see who they're going to put her up against next. But I say put Misha Tate up against the winner of Zink. No. Actually, I take that back because because Zingano, Zingano should fight should fight Rousey if she. What wins. they're gonna? They, okay, this I is say what, put up against a bitch. Bitch, go ahead. This is what's gonna happen. Amanda Nunes and Kat Zingano are gonna fight. Kat Zingano is gonna win. Mm -hmm. They're gonna put Kat Zingano up against Ronda Rousey, mm -hmm. rightfully earned. Yeah, of I've course. been we we've been waiting to see that fight for a year now. Mm -hmm. So ever since uh, Kat's been out on you know personal issues and stuff, and mm -hmm. then she got an injury. Um, I've been waiting to see that fight forever. Next week next week it happens uh and then yeah i'd say misha tate and betch kohei if be fun if betch can get past misha give her rousey give her rousey yeah. yeah i mean even if it's just because she's been doing this whole four three two one horsewoman thing that's fine because rousey wants to fight her but of course dana is like i gotta give it to cat if she wins so yeah i mean it is what it is and i think that's i think that's, that's the order the that's pecking fair. order i think yeah. it should go cat then betch but yeah betch and misha that's a great matchup um Betch is proving her way up, and Misha is a very high-ranked veteran that deserves Miss, to be at the top. Yeah, like I said definitely making sure that she stays at that top. Yeah, that she doesn't belong. She doesn't deserve to to drop down in the ranking. Yeah. So good. And for there's her. people that I mean I I've seen in the past fighters get get you know maybe opponent that they shouldn't be going against like someone way worse than them so to speak, and they go out and perform to their level. Mm -hmm. Whereas Misha Tate clearly had you know, a huge gap in talent over Rinda Kai and still went out there and said, and proved it, yeah. proved it every second of that fight. Um, That's funny. Cause one of the judges had it two rounds of one. I'm kind of curious what round they had it for. Rinda for Rinda Kai. I, I yeah. don't understand how the, the next, go ahead. I, I just feel when she got her back, she got her off her back. The fastest way you can get somebody off. When someone gets on your back, it's a process. It's anybody who just shuck somebody off their back. I mean, you, you don't do that. You, you, you're smart about it. You do the baseball bat. You get the arm over the head so you don't get choked first. Once you get that, then you work on sliding them down. But Misha Tate couldn't have been smarter about it. She leaned over mm -hmm. and let Rin waste all her energy by trying to hang on. That was that. So there was no winning, in my opinion, in Rin Nakai. Oh, maybe the maybe the initial jump on the back, like, yeah, good job. But, but after yeah. that, it was nothing. 
The next, the next fight went to decision as well. Mm-hmm. Yoshihiro Akiyama beat Amir Sadala. Both guys haven't fought in a long time. Whew. Akiyama, I think, was it two years? Maybe even three, yeah. two and a half years? I think Amir He's Sadala. 39. F- former, yeah. Amir Sadala won the Ultimate Fighter too. Yeah. Um, not the Ultimate Fighter as well. As not well. the second season of Ultimate Fighter. But, the, I don't know what season it was. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, Akiyama... Nicknamed Sexy Yama. Sexy Yama. Sexy Yama. Um, yeah, definitely shows that even though he's 39, even though he's been gone for like two, three years, he, was he still belongs. He was really fe- There was, I, I don't know if um, Sadala was going for like a body kick. He was going for something. He like kicked him. And at the exact same time, perfectly timed, Akiyama tripped him. Mm. And it was like, it was just looked so dramatic. Like they just went like that. Um, it was just very athletic yeah i mean definitely got him with so many good shots too yeah that, um but that yeah well. good for him hopefully he can uh come back i know his last fight was yeah it says two and a half years ago wow a lot of jake shield so mm-hmm. i think was that welterweight middleweight uh i don't know i think it was oh it looks like it was welterweight so welterweight. we'll see who they put him up against what do you think you say anything yeah, for him? No, no, no not right now. Not, not yet. Yeah. The, yeah. The, 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 that that division's way too stacked right now for him to yeah. just kind of go. Give over him it, a so. couple more yeah. comeback fights, and then let's see where he is. I agree. Although the next fight, I I'm a huge Miles Jury fan. So many people, everyone loves Miles. And it's Jury. funny because he kind of came out of nowhere. He did. Um, he was on the Ultimate Fighter, so he would think that. I think that was the one that. I think that was a live one. I could be wrong. Rich the Jay first Ryan, live yeah. one? Yeah. Well, yeah. The, oh, the only live one, I think. Oh, the only um, one? Yeah. He, I know he lost to, um, what's his name? Ally Akinsa. Okay. So that was the one that Michael Chiesa won. So, that, yeah. So, okay. Um, which Michael Chiesa just fought Joe Lozon. Mm-hmm. I'm going back I'm going back and forth. But, yeah, That's dude. Okay. Miles Jury, he's undefeated. And he fought Takanori Gomi. Have you seen some of his fights, Gomi? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That guy is a pride veteran, a, a pride if anybody knows you watch Takanori Gomi in Pride, yeah. you will see this guy in his absolute prime. He's no joke. Absolutely. Mac Ma- Ma- Danzig fought him. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we asked him about it, and he's like, he's a tough yeah, dude. Yeah, he's legit, dude. He's and, legit. And, I mean, he's a guy who kind of came into UFC with a lot of hype, um, still kind of did well. So anybody who you put up against Gomi, if anybody, he's one of those guys that even though he isn't maybe top five, you beat Gomi, you're pretty good. Yeah. It's, it's one of those, like, check on my record thing. Exactly. Like, I Gomi's a legend. I mean, mm-hmm. it's funny because like the Diaz brothers are known known to talk smack, to talk everything. Yeah, they were like the only guy like, dude, Gomi. And Nate Diaz was like, dude, I respect you, Gomi. No, like, uh, I'm, you know, I, that I, they beat him. Says a lot. They both beat Gomi, but they were like, dude, thank you for the opportunity. You know? That's so, so funny. Yeah. They yeah, immense respect to Taka Nori Gomi. Mm-hmm. Uh, by the way, Miles Jory defeated him uh, TKO in round one. That, that was, was the exciting. first time. Taki Gomi, correct me if I'm wrong, has ever been defeated via punches. I'm going to check right now. That right? is what Mac Danzig said. I don't know. I didn't have my statistics I want to say that's not true. It's apparently... Let's see. Let's see if it's the first time he's ever been TKO'd. Oh, uh, that is correct, apparently. Wow. So I'll, I'll go into... That, that's a good segue into the next fight. But anybody, any veteran that you can do something that has never been done before... That's an accomplishment. Yeah. How many fights does Takiori have? Uh, his record as of right now is... Wow, he's at 46. <sighs> so out of 46 fights, 10, he's 30, 35 and 10. Right. With one no contest. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, that was Nick Diaz versus uh, Gomi. Uh-huh. That was the one that ended up in a no contest. Um, yeah, he's only been knocked out one time. And that was it. Wow. That, But that's it. That just shows how good Mao's jury is. He is, dude. He is one of these prospects that I'm like, I'm going to know him now. And I'm going to know him in five, ten years. I mean, to the point where coming into next week, which right. is a huge, huge car that I have been dying oh, for this I to come. Wait. And I really want to go. Um, I say wait, put him up against Vegas. Oh, it, that's the card that Jay could probably give me tickets to. Hopefully. I'm going to be there. Why don't you come out? But that's hopefully. I mean, I'd say it's, I'd say to the point where the winner of Donna Cerrone, Eddie Alvarez, put him against Miles Jury for a number one contendership. I'm, all, I'm with you on that. It's a, it's a little unorthodox. I think it's jumping a couple rankings, but. But I think Miles Jury is that good. He's Miles Jury himself. is and that it's, good. And it's not only that. I mean, he and, just came off a victory against Diego Sanchez, and he also beat Michael Johnson like two fights ago. No joke. So it's not like he's he's beating a bunch of nobodies or co- these up and coming guys. Yeah. He's beating these guys that have already proven themselves. I agree. Diego Sanchez, uh, he's had he's had the lightweight title shot. Diego Sanchez right. has, um, done all that stuff. So I think. 
beating him is no joke. Let's go over Mark Hunt and Roy Nelson so that we can get to the predictions for next week. That really fight excited. was awesome. Mark Hunt. Okay, guys. Guys. You guys are watching. I'm going to test you right now. Tweet at AfterBuzz UFC or at Daria B28, whatever. George Hermosa. Um, what did I say was going to happen in this fight, J-Tan? We said. We both we, said that. We Did we both? Yeah. Okay, we both said it. We both said that Mark Hunt was going to knock out Roy Nelson. Second round. What? What did Jay Tan say? I think he said Roy Nelson was going to win. I think he also womp, said womp. decisively, decisively that there's no way that we were going to be right. Jay Tan, we were right. Let me tell you something about Roy Nelson. That guy has a chin. Who do you, uh, yes. at, the, at the top of your head, who's got the best hands in the heavyweight division? Oh. You're okay. You're right. Junior Dos Santos. Yeah. You're right. Um, So... If you remember four years ago, they fought J- JDS and Roy yes, Nelson. Yes, 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 and yes, Roy yes, Nelson yes. took a beating. Yeah, I, I've and seen it. Dos Santos did not finish him. Yeah. Roy Nelson has fought Frank Mir. I know. Uh, he Cormier, is a weathered Verdum. guy. Verdum, that guy, he's been finished before years ago. I think Arlovsky finished him years now, ago. What do you say about this win? Do you say, oh my God, Mark Hunt just has the best hands now and hit that uppercut was stronger than any any uppercut Roy Nelson. You know Nelson's what's funny is they said that ever. Hunt didn't even hit that hard. But that's how hard he hits, the fact that it was like at maybe 70% and it still knocked out Roy Nelson. Or, or do you say Roy Nelson's losing his chin? Roy Nelson is not losing his okay, chin. Okay, well then Mark Hunt, there you go. Awesome win. Oh my God, that fight was awesome. Right? Like, like, like I said, just going back to what I said earlier, anytime where you can do something to somebody... That they're not known for. Roy Nelson has a chin, so for someone to knock him yeah. out, that's an accomplishment. Yeah, it is. That's an accomplishment. So kudos to Mark Hunt. Um, I agree. I would. I honestly, as a fan, I want him to get a title shot. I know he's not, because right. I mean, like I said, they put him up against JDS one time and he lost. Yeah. But no, I mean, I'd be coming off Arlovsky, that'd be a good matchup. That would be a great matchup. I would love to see Arlovsky and Mark Hunt. They just, you know, Arlovsky just fight last week. Mark Hunt They're just saying fought Arlovsky last night. Arlovsky might be losing his chin. Maybe Mark Hunt can lay another one right that'd there. Be good. But it'd be a rematch because no, 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 no. I don't think they ever fought. I don't think they ever fought. I, I don't recall I them could. fighting. Actually, they. But I actually they could have. I don't think they did. Um. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think they did. So next week in Las Vegas, Ooh. we have. Demetrius Johnson oh. versus Carriasso. I mean, that's that's just awesome in itself. I love watching DJ fight. Really? Oh, he's just so quick and little and cute. Um, then we have Donald Cerrone versus Eddie Alvarez. Oh, my God. Dustin Poirier. Your mo- that's your mother's favorite fighter. It is. Donald Cerrone. Yeah. After my mom was sleeping when she was on the show, she goes, Daria, uh, my favorite fighter is the cowboy. The cowboy. I'm like, Donald Cerrone, mom. Yeah, my mom loves dude, Donald Trump. I'm, uh, dude, I'm excited for that one. And Dustin Poirier versus Conor McGregor. Yeah. Holy okay. crap. So the, this is the thing. The Fireworks. UFC put tons of hype behind Conor McGregor, but I think it's there. And I'm going to give him a chance. I hope that Dustin Poirier gives him a war and that he can prove himself once and for all and that Conor McGregor still comes out on top because I like his attitude. And you know what Mac Danzig said? He said that Conor McGregor took a direct page out of the Diaz brothers book. Good. And I said, that's pretty cool. It's not a bad, that's not, a, that's no, not, a comp, that's not an insult. It's he said it as a compliment. compliment. Yeah. He did. He said it. He's, he's like, it's really cool when you get to the level in, in MMA where really great fighters are, uh, you know, imitating or trying to be really great fighters. That means we've come to a time in the sport where we have veterans that are, you know, notable. Mm-hmm. Anyway, Tim Kennedy and Yoel Romero. Zingano's coming back after like two Zingano, years. Dude, Amanda dude this, cra- this card is so good. That former champion Dominic Cruz in his comeback fight is on the prelims. That's that how good insane. from top to bottom this like, card is. If, M- one of my favorites, Stephen Thompson, Wonder Boy fighting Patrick yeah. Cote. Uh, James Cross coming off a brutal victory over uh, Jamie Varner fighting uh, what was it, Jorge Masvidal. I mean, holy crap! To see a name, do- to say Dominic Cruz would be on a prelim. If you would have told me that a couple years ago, I would have told you, you were crazy. Mm-hmm. I- it's insane. So uh, there is so much good UFC next week. Uh, we'll I, be here. We'll I'll be, be here back in time. Sunday. Yeah, I'll be back in time. I will be in Vegas during it, so hopefully I can score myself some tickets. UFC, if you're watching, hook it up. Uh, please, I'm begging you. Please, we're begging. It's my birthday. It's I my just birthday. want cage side seats. No nosebleeds. No. No, I want cage side. I uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell the truth right now. I had nosebleeds for the Ronda Rousey Sarah, Sarah McMahon maybe. Yeah, Sarah McMahon. And uh, right before the fight started, 
I snuck my way down. <laughs> Quick, Daria. Yep. Shout outs. Where can we find you? Where are oh you fighting? God. Okay, I'm fighting October 11. Maverick Stadium, October 11th, Aldento, California. If you want tickets, tweet me at DariaB28. Really? I'll hook it up. Yeah. Really? That yeah. simple? Yeah, just tweet me and I'll get you your tickets. Can I text you? Yeah, you can text me. Can I video chat you? Yep. Skype you? Nope. Snapchat? Nope. Twitter? No. Yeah. You said yes. Yep. Instagram? Yeah. No. You can, well, speaking of Twitter, Instagram, you can find me at G Hermosa, the G H E R M O Z A. Uh, you can follow me on Facebook, like me on Facebook. Uh, shout out to uh, my girls at the League After Buzz, at Jen the Jew, at Lauren Leonelli. Sorry, Draw, you're being replaced. Oh. Um, mm. Yeah, mm. I know. Um, what else? Uh, find I love him you. Everywhere. Guys, uh, yeah, like all my Facebooks and stuff. Darry Ray Baronado. You'll find me. We will see you next week. But first, tune in Thursday to The Ultimate Fighter. We do it right here every Thursday night at 5 p.m. Don't miss us. See you guys later. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. AfterBuzz. Buzz, Buzz you, you later. later. <laughs> Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.